The next question we would have for Lot has to do with the end of the chapter. And it's Lot, why did your daughters make up such a twisted, incestuous plan and follow through with it? Why did they have no qualms about it? His daughters reasoned. Notice how they reasoned fearfully and faithlessly by saying this. You see what it says in the passage. His two daughters went with him. They went up to a cave. So he finds himself still going out to a cave. Notice this. They're going to send him to the mountains. He says, no, send me to a city. And he still goes over to a cave. Is Lot seeming, is he, is he out of his mind? They say this in verse 31. Our father is old. There's no man on earth to come into us as is the custom of all the earth. So some say the daughters thought that the world ended when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed and the cities of the plain. The problem is where did they just come from? They just came from another city. They just came from Zoar. There's people there. This is not Noah and the flood when all the earth is destroyed. There's people there. So they're fearful and they're faithless. They don't believe God can provide for them, for for, uh, someone to father children, to continue on their family. And there's still some ethic operating in their mind where they can concoct this plan and go through with it. It's shameful. It's hard to read it. This is the opposite direction that God is taking Abraham. Remember, he promised Abraham, you will have a child, the child of promise with Sarah. And it really was impossible, but God provided a child. That's not the case here. Tragically, ironically, in his own drunkenness, Lot carried out the shameful act that he himself had suggested to the men of Sodom. He lay with his own daughters. Lot's daughters were taken out of Sodom, but so much of the life and the culture and the godless values were in them that they made up this crazy, ungodly plan. Similar to their mother, Lot's wife, her love for the city, her love for the world, consumed her and it consumed them. Remember, Lot's wife, it says, looked back. Verse 17 gives the command, don't look back. The passage says that she looked back and then was memorialized in this turning to a pillar of salt. Well, I don't think it was a quick glance back. Commentators bring out the fact that there is a longing. It's not just let me see what happened here. That would have been disobedience as well. But it's a heart that wants to be there. She looks back more than a mere glance. That that makes sense too when you consider how Jesus warned the disciples in Luke chapter 17 about what it will be like when he returns. The Son of Man is going to return to bring judgment. And he warns the people, do not turn back in that day. Then, in order to illustrate illustrate his point, what does Jesus say? Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Followed by these words from Jesus, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. How counterintuitive. Jesus says, you love this world and you want it, you're going to lose your life. You love me, forsake this world and lose your life, you're going to find life because Christ is life. Lot's wife lost her life trying to save it, longing for salvation from her beloved city, Sodom, more than from God himself. Lot's daughters end up giving birth to the boys who would become the father of two nations, the Moabites and the Ammonites. When you read through the New Testament, you know what you see? They're a thorn in the side to the Israelites, God's people. They would become enemies of Israel. It would be so shocking that Jesus' genealogy is Ruth, a Moabite woman. Why is that so shocking? Because look, at this is the beginning of the Moabites.